The way forward is for the Ruto regime to come down, stop the arrogance of chest thumping, sit down and talk to the doctors. You cannot say there is no money, yet we see you splashing our money on luxury items. The tea alone taken at State House is enough to meet the doctor's demands. So let's get serious. We call out the Ruto regime for the callousness in handling or mishandling the doctor's strike, thereby causing untold suffering and loss of lives of citizens. At the heart of the strike is the plight of intern doctors who are being left to stay and posted and unemployed for over a year and in some extreme cases for seven years. It's happening when our health facilities are seriously understaffed. In other words, we really need the services of the interns who have now not been posted. It's also happening when our health facilities are ill-equipped. It is unconscionable for the regime to continue splashing taxpayers' money on non-essential luxury items like motor vehicles, new uh, pavilions in state house, fancy umbrellas, to name but a few. So citizens do not matter to this regime and that their priority is their own comfort and that of a select few. We condemn this in the strongest terms possible. As Kenyans, we deserve better. The fertilizer scandal is yet another demonstration of callousness of this regime. Selling fake fertilizer and um, seeds which are believed also not to be good enough, therefore fake seeds to farmers, is wishing hunger and death for Kenyans and especially the vulnerable who are the majority. The fake fertilizer haste suggests a deliberate scheme to lower food production, to increase food insecurity, in order to force starving Kenyans to be at the mercy of food cartels. It is a sadistic act by those entrusted with the task of making the nation food secure. This shows that this regime does not care about its citizens and its aim is to send Kenya to its death bed as food security ought to be at the heart and as a priority for any government. Do we deserve this as Kenyans? That's the question we must ask ourselves. That thousands of families in Dabibi farm within Naivasha can be dispossessed and face imminent eviction without a word from the regime is surprising as it is sad. We are staring at the making of a humanitarian crisis of great proportions. Alas, for Dabibi, it is Ruto himself who is said to be the buyer, the buyer in quotes of the 5,000 acres from a Mr. Kipkule. The curious questions that beg for answers are, when did Ruto acquire this land? How much did he pay? What was his source of money? Because to you, come back on a shamba ya pesa. We just want to know that he was a bona fide purchaser. So, what was his source of money? Did his due diligence inform him that there were over 40,000 families living on the farm? Because that is something that is known to any member of the public. Is there any special reason? that Dr. Ruto's ownership has only been revealed when he captured state power. Why not before? And now that he has state power, could he consider removing the GSU from uh, the Bibi while ownership issues are sorted out? Otherwise, it appears that there is high-handedness when the man sitting at the helm of the state is unleashing GSO, GSU on hapless citizens who are also waving title deeds. He tells us he has title. But so do the people living in Dabibi. How will it be uh, uh, arbitrated 
when he is using state power to drive these people away and to make them fear. The Dabibi issue, uh, we are hot on the heels because these are Kenyans, these are Nakuru people that are being displaced. So we really welcome uh, Her Excellency uh, to take over the matter so that we arbitrate on that issue. About the cost of living, people are on their knees. That is the truth. And as Nakuru people, we are very, very unhappy. And we are calling out on this regime that we are not going to allow that one to happen. As has been well and ably articulated, uh, we have the power to recall. We even don't think that the five years uh, will come to an end. We really want to recall this government because it has oppressed the common manage. Uh, we are on the way in readiness for 2027 because in that Kenya, we are not ready to play a second fiddle. We are playing the first, in the first, first 11 and we are going to present, as we have declared here in Naivasha, that we are going to have candidates at all levels, from president, governor, uh, senators, women rep, speak, uh, MPs, and also MCAs. So be ready for us, other counties. <laughs>